In this tutorial, I hope to clear up some confusion around Elementor templates and the content created inside of the Classic Editor or the Gutenberg Editor and how they connect. I've created a blog post template video a few months ago, and so far I've received a lot of questions on that video about how the Elementor template relates to the content we create inside the Classic Editor or the Gutenberg Editor. ThingMaker67 puts it quite nicely. I'm going to skip down right to the middle to the sentence here. I guess I'm having trouble understanding how Elementor takes the content of the classic editor and arranges it the right way in the template. If you or anyone else reading this can help me, I would appreciate it. I've messed up a couple posts trying to figure this out. Thanks. And I know ThingMaker67 is not the only one with this problem, and I hope that this video will clear up that confusion. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below this video. I try to answer them the best I can. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. We will help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you have not done so yet, make sure to click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And now let's get started. And if you followed along in the previous video, this is the blog post template that we created. We have a title up here, an icon, image in the back, these clouds, author image, author name, and the, the content of the actual post right there. We didn't create the stuff on the side or this piece on the bottom in that previous video, but we created all the design elements of the blog post. And where we did this is inside of the Elementor template section. Let's go to Theme Builder. Let's try the new version, because why not? And what we have is the blog template right here. If I click on Preview and then click on Edit, it takes us to the Elementor editor, and then we can change the design of the blog post template. And that is all the places that we hover over and we can change our design as we do with Elementor on a regular basis. And the content from the post itself is this piece right here. This is an Elementor widget. It's called the post content widget. It's built right into Elementor Pro and it pulls in your post content. So all the content you put into the Classic Editor or Gutenberg is going to end up right here in this blue box. Doesn't matter if that's images or text or block quotes or videos or whatever it is, whatever you create in the Classic Editor or Gutenberg is going to end up right in here. And so if I go back out to our posts, I'll illustrate what I mean by opening all of these posts. So we're going to open every single one of these. They all have different content inside of the post, but you'll see that their designs are pretty much the same. So we have the title up here, the background, the clouds, and here's the post content. Next one, same thing. Different title though. This is pulled in dynamically as well in the template using the heading option. There's a dynamic tag symbol here, just like this one, and you can choose the post title and that pulls in the post title dynamically. So that changes for every post and the content is different for every post. And if there's a different author for every post, this would be a different author image and author name. Let's go to the last one. Again, same design, same design we created in the Elementor template. It just pulls in the information from our classic editor. So I think where ThingMaker was going wrong that a lot of others may be going wrong as well is they created the template. So they've created this, so they followed along with the last video. If you want to see that video, it's a link to in the card up above and the description down below if you want to check that out. It's pretty quick and shows you how to create a template. So they successfully created the template and then they created a post. So they'd be creating this post right here. Let's say we're still creating this and they would have all the content in here, the title, the actual written content. This is using Gutenberg. Same thing for Classic Editor. doesn't matter which one you use, Gutenberg or Classic Editor doesn't matter. So they created the content here and then they clicked on edit with Elementor and that's where they went wrong. All you have to do is create the title and put the content in here and Elementor, the template, pulls in that information into the design that we see here. There's the title. Here's the content. There's the title. Here's the content. You do not need to click edit with Elementor. If you do, this is what happens. We load the Elementor editor and now we can edit stuff in here. Of course, this is pulling in the information and we can edit stuff in here. This is pulling in the data from our post itself and we can kind of write a blog post in here as well, but we don't need to do that. You can't change the headline either. You can't change that, but we can edit the content in here, but we don't need to do that. We exit out of here and we go back to WordPress editor. We create the template in Elementor and that's the design. You can think of it like a picture frame. We create the picture frame as an Elementor template and the content that goes into the picture frame 
is all the content in here. For using templates for blog posts, ignore this button. In fact, if you don't even want that button there, because you don't need it, you usually use this button for pages, not very often for posts, you should be able to turn that off in the settings. Let's go to Elementor settings. We can turn it off for posts. And then we don't get confused because we do not need that button there in most cases. Now the button's gone. You won't even be tempted to click it. It's not even there. So again, the two things you need, Elementor template, which is the design, which is the picture frame, and the content created inside the Classic Editor or the Gutenberg Editor, and that's it. Let's create the content here, click on Update, and you're done. The last thing to make sure of is that the template is assigned to your blog posts. So let's exit out of this template. Let's go to our theme builder. Let's try it now for the new one. And let's go to blog post or blog template. Go to preview. And we see down here, instances under posts. Click on edit conditions. And here we can apply where this post appears. Here's a little error message saying I have two, two templates assigned for the, the posts, and that's fine. This is a demo site. If you have this error, just make sure you don't have two templates assigned to, to the same thing. So under here, I have posts and all, which means this template is gonna be used for all of my posts. That will connect our Elementor template to our content that's built inside the Classic Editor. And it's two different parts of the same animal. Just think of a picture frame being the Elementor template and the content being what you create in the Classic Editor or the Gutenberg Editor. And all you have to do is create the content, you save it, and you're done, as long as you have this set to be shown as the template for posts. So I hope that clears things up. If it didn't, please let me know down below this video. And next up, I think you should watch this video right here, which is the blog post template video that preceded this one that created the design that you saw in this video. So check that out. It's step-by-step. Step. It'll walk you right through how to do everything. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss new future videos. And also get on the private Facebook group where we're all helping each other with WordPress. There's a link to that in the description down below. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Until next time, keep crushing it, and I will see you in the next video.